Researchers have just found a gene that links East Asians to educational attainment. And is this the most stereotypical thing in the world? Let's talk about it. Yeah, you know, we're talking about new genes, but apparently we're born with a nerd gene. Uh, the, 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 a study conducted by Korean medical researchers in collaboration with the Taiwanese team involved a genome-wide association study, Andrew, with samples from 176,400 individuals, Whoa. and they discovered that they were tracking extra high on this chromosome that has been labeled Edu years. That's a funny name for the okay. chromosome, right? So basically, Andrew, potentially being nerdy and good at school is a little bit genetic. Hold I don't know, up. Man. Hold up. Hold up. We're going to talk about this because does that mean nature versus nurture? What does it mean to have this gene show up a little bit more or a little bit less? Maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe it's more on the place that you're born into. Anyways, guys, please, we're going to get into it. It's going to get spicy. Hit that like button right now. Uh, watch the video through, leave your comment down below, and check out Small Ass Sauce. Hey man, from Sichuan to Sicily, Andrew, nature versus nurture, or do you mean nurture? Nurture. Uh, I will say this. Oh this, this by the way, Andrew, the study also followed up by saying, while the study unveiled a genetic link, the researchers cautioned against using these variants to predict an individual's educational achievement, emphasizing the influence of social and environmental factors. Andrew, they also did a quantitative estimate saying that this extra, if you like rank really high on the Edu years chromosome, it estimating it only gives you a 10% of variance in total education attainment. However, is 10% a lot if you get slotted into different lanes early in life. Well, we're going to talk about it, man, because I, I guess I got some thoughts on this because uh, I think that, l assuming that this is true, I mean, these are researchers. They did find this gene. I'm not in the lab with them, so I'm not going to tell them that it's not true. But I think the debatable part is how much of an impact that has on your life because your life is made up of a ton of different factors. It's not just the brain that you're born with. It's literally the family you're born into, the environment, do they care about education? All these other things. Do you care about education? Maybe you find out you're into other things and, and then you don't go into, because education attainment, what they're talking about is literally attaining like a degree, but you can be very smart and not attain a degree. Or you can be street smart. Yeah. You could be merchant smart. I mean, there's different levels and different types of intelligence. Well, well, let's just get into some stats, Andrew. How true is this? Because 6% uh, of the Asian American population is Asian, but they make up 41% of the students that score over 1,400 on the SAT. So obviously, like, it's not like anybody was really like, I mean, I guess it's like a stereotypical sounding uh, I, study. I, does, I, it, is it, does it not sound stereotypical? Uh, like, did you know there's also studies about Kenyan lung capacity? Because Kenyans typically win all the long distance sports in the, Olympi uh, in the Olympics, and Jamaicans are heavily overrepresented in the sprinting sports. Right, right. So there's, so there's actually studies around this. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, I guess you would say very athletic people, they generally have a higher what, fast twitch count in their muscles? Uh, it has to do with gene. something between the transfer of oxygen through the blood, through blood passage. Yeah, rate. so maybe a lot of top-level athletes, whether they're black or not black, whatever, but, like, the stereotype is that black people are athletic, right? But, so then it's higher, but then there's still obviously a lot of athletic non-black people. So I guess, like, yeah, I, I guess what I mean is, like, I know what everybody's thinking. That, one, they're not shocked by this. Because they're like, oh, Asians got the gene to be smart or genes to sit down and study math. Well, that's not mind blowing. Right. The black guys dunking the ball. The Asian guys yeah. dunking the books. Yeah. That's like what that, you're that. meant to do now. Now due to our genetics, we're all meant to do that, but it only accounts for 10%. And really your environment is going to count for everything else. However, it is true that in America, let's say for example, Andrew, we're slotting kids into like different lunch tables, that 10%, could make you excel at something and then make you identify with that thing. And then that lane in life, whichever one lane you end up getting slotted into your cultural positioning due to the fishbowl you're born into, it keeps on rolling from that right, point. Right, right, Yeah, but then at the same time, I mean, there's a lot of people who fall out of academics who are no. smart. A lot of people are born smart that never, you know, maximize their capabilities. There's this one quote from another study that's part of this article, and it's written by the, the scientist the conclusion I draw is that despite the relatively high genetic irritability shown in most brain processes associated with learning, meaning that yes, some level of brain power is inherited, we, this is not shocking, right? 
Educational practices are a key contributor to a student development, allowing genetically based skills to be enhanced or alternatively diminished. Therefore, one of the main goals of education in a changing and uncertain world should be to form adaptable and versatile people who can and want to make the most of their capabilities. So it's all about maximizing yourself at the end of the day. For sure. And there's this whole new field uh, of epigenetics, which means in the first three, three to five years of your life, your genetics can actually shift. A lot of people thought your genetics were like stuck in a womb or whatever like that. I'll say this, growing up in a, I would say, highly academic Chinese family, Andrew, mm -hmm. I, I'll say this, being conventionally academically smart from like a metric analytically trackable level was extremely important. It was your identity. It was your self-worth. Mm -hmm. And for better or worse, Andrew, obviously we know not all Chinese families are like this, but a lot are, mm -hmm. right? It, your self-worth and how you see yourself in the mirror is tied to how well oh. you are doing at school. Social pressure is huge. And then once you kind of get into that flow, once you've been pushed to achieve high, and then you can already achieve high and things become easier, then you're just going to keep doing that. And it makes sense. Right. But well, that's what you do as a person. That's right? what you're so built for. Essentially, at that point, it's not what you're born for. It's what you're built for. Like right. building happens throughout your life. Being born is one thing and you are born a certain way, but there's also things that can change you in your early years. And the truth is not everybody has a huge ass energy bar to take every rep of everything they do in their life with 10 out of 10 intensity, right? Yeah. But I'll tell you this, in a nerdy Chinese family or a nerdy Asian family, Andrew, any math problem, science problem, uh, verbal thing related to the SATs, you're taught to approach every rep so seriously. And it kind of reminds me of the way Denzel is training his son at basketball and he got game. Or I looked, I was looking up some footage, Andrew, of Luka Doncic training him when he was 12 years old with these crazy rubber bands around him. People are hitting him with like the training sticks and he's shooting jumpers with rubber bands tied mm -hmm. around his body. Look at how intense they're taking those reps. But just imagine that, but for something more academic. Right. So yeah, it's just all about your training. And um, yeah, anyway, let's just get into the comment section. Somebody said, garbage study did not consider social, historical, cultural, geographic, attitude considerations meaningless. I mean, they did mention that in the article. They mentioned that educational attainment is a very specific thing. So it takes a lot of environmental and uh, factors and structures because you can't attain any education if there's no school in your village. Right, you're saying, let's say for example, you have really high edu years chromosomes, right? Uh, but you're born into a country that has no political stability or a lot of infrastructure instability or like natural yeah. disasters. Or you're, built, or you're born on a farm 50 miles away from the nearest school. How are you gonna achieve high in school when there is no school? For sure, for sure. You, I guess you'll never get to utilize those things. You know what it kind of reminds me of too, Andrew? There's a lot of uh, really tall players that are born in Africa right now, but they're not getting the NBA training to go to the league. Right, right, Like right. they're playing soccer growing up sure. until somebody finds them, right? Um, anyway, uh, this comment is from a white guy. It says, that's bogus. It's the culture. Western society has passed all the glory years, and now everybody is just going towards a balanced life. Asians aren't there yet, so they are still mostly driven by their parents. And they say Asians are now at the forefront and want to succeed in a competitive world. This is Asia's time, essentially. Right. This white guy is basically saying, like, come on, man. We already did all that, man. Last 300, 400, 500 years. We're we, we just chilling now. Right. So I guess Asians are still got that, like, kind of like, hey, I'm new to this. I'm working hard type. Like, I'm an immigrant no, it is, I mean, there's some truth to it. Like, let's see, Andrew, let's analyze the old money families in America. The guys who like built up all that wealth in like 1890s and 1920s, you know, like Rothschilds or something. Mm -hmm. The Rothschilds that exist now, they're just chilling. Right. But the guy, somebody had to do the work somewhere, right? right? Yeah. Um, some guy says, this study is so goofy. Why are Japanese so low on the... Um, educational attainment chart compared to other, like, for example, like Indians, when you said Japan is a much better country. But actually, what people don't understand is it does have to do with immigration waves because most of the Japanese that immigrated to America in the early 1900s, Andrew, were actually uneducated farmers. Mm. Like that's, you know what I mean? Like from uh, to Hawaii or the West Coast. Right, right, right. That's right, so th like, like we said, this guy was also pointing out that immigration waves, how people came uh, also explains a lot of like group inequities. Right, but they're, I guess they're ranking Asians in Asia because they did Taiwan and Korea. So the study is with Taiwanese and Koreans, not in America, but over Yeah, yeah, there. no, but people were verifying this study with uh, undergraduate attainment statistics in America. Oh. So that's oh. why the, you know. No, like it correlates. Interesting. Ultimately, man, I'll say this. 
I'm not really that surprised. I don't even know how much I believe in it, but I just know that the culture you're raised in and what you are taught to see in the mirror every day and what that person is supposed to deliver on uh, every day, that's about a function of like 10,000 or at least a thousand different factors when you're being yeah. raised. Yeah, I agree. You know, I mean, let's say the attainment accounts for 10%. What's the other 90%, right? The other 90% is big. Yeah, obviously, if you're smart from a young age and you're told that you're smart and you do feel smart, then you're going to identify as a smart person. And then you're going to continue to do smart things. That's and, and just be and, smart. And you're going to develop normative behaviors with a reference group that you also identify yeah, as Yeah, and smart, then you're right? going to hang out with smart kids. You Your know friends what? are going to be smart, blah, blah, blah. I knew this girl who was an adopted Chinese girl. Okay. And she was born into a family with uh, one other adopted girl that was from Chinese and one biological sister. And she said that she was the only one that identified with the nerdy Asians growing up in the suburbs of North Carolina, of Chapel Hill, and then ended up getting a full ride scholarship to college when uh, neither of her other siblings did. Right, they grew because up in she, the same family. Yeah, because she said they grew up in the same family, but she just happened to relate to that like boba drinking, meme sharing crowd that was like all into it. That was her friend group. So she developed normative no, behaviors. She, she with hung them. out with the SAT squad. Yeah, because she yeah. looked like them. But then she said even her adopted other sister didn't do that. Yeah, well, you can even be from the same family and experience different things. Is it just her 10% gene that um, made her want to just be so much smarter? There's other factors too. So I guess, I, I guess, you know, achieving a educational degree, there's so many more factors to that than there are even to just being smart right. and having a high IQ, right? And even achieving a high IQ, there's probably still factors that play into that. So everything, it, it, uh, yeah. it, it is true that if we want to get into ancient history, literally East Asia or Confucius or like Confucian culture, or scholastic culture, or like China invented national exams though. Yeah. So why, I mean, wouldn't the people who invented something typically be pretty into it? Yeah. That's a whole nother story though. I'll pop up some links. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think of this study in the comment section below. Is it valid, not valid, valid, nature versus nurture versus nurture? Who knows? Um, we encourage the debate until next time with the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.